she is one part scissor sister, one part robo fanatic, and she is all animatronic. Yeah, we've gone and added a bona fide pop star to the clip crew. Having already documented the greatest robots of all time, we sent her to Italy to find out how machines may soon be pulling moves that will make Jake here proud. The world is full of extraordinary creatures with highly specialized abilities that allow them to navigate and thrive in the most hostile of environments. And the genius of nature is exactly where scientists are looking to take inspiration for designing the next generation of robots. I have come to Scuola Sant'Anna in Italy, where researchers and engineers at the Soft Robotics Lab have been studying the octopus, a highly intelligent and adaptable creature with complex motor skills, a unique method of locomotion, and an aptitude for solving problems. The octopus's highly sensitive and agile tentacles have evolved to move in intricate and sophisticated ways. Yet most of the intelligence lies within the arms themselves and not in the sea creature's brain. It's this sort of intelligence soft robotics are emulating, engineering robots with motor function built into its limbs and without the heavy parts or computer processing that traditional mechanical robotics rely on. Sometimes if you design the soft body well in, the, in, the, in a smart way, even with just one movement, I'm pulling the wires, it's just the one motor that can do that. You obtain a nice grasping and the materials are such that they can adapt to the object to grasp and be effective. I think that soft robotics can make you imagine really new scenarios for robots that uh, can deform, can elongate like the octopus arm, can deform and pass through small uh, spaces or they can even grow. And another advantage of building robots inspired by nature is that their interactions with humans could become more naturalistic too. The team here have created this shower head, in effect a giant octopus arm, to assist people with mobility issues with washing themselves. You developed this and then you sort of gave it to the world, didn't you? <laughs> and asked what they want from this technology, is that correct? Yeah, yes, in a sense. Actually, at the very beginning of our octopus project, the very typical question was, what is it for? Why right. are you building a robot in the shape of an octopus? Uh, and that was a good question if you want, but for me it was very clear that the challenge was in the technologies for building a soft robot. Right. Um, a very nice field of application is the biomedical field, because uh, there um, one of the big problems, the big challenge is the interaction with a person, with the patient, uh -huh. with the person to assist. So if you have a soft robot, of course, a lot of problems are already uh, reduced because uh, safety is uh, more intrinsically uh, right. in the robot. It can bend in any direction and is made entirely by soft materials. And while its movements are complex, the limbs contain no artificial intelligence in the traditional sense. All the movement is achieved, like the octopus, by its physical design, by the special material that it's made from and their ability to expand and contract only by changing air pressure going through its tubes. And the team is looking to take advantage of this natural movement even further, this time by miniaturizing it. This is made from a 3D printed mold, so you get a lot of tiny, tiny, very intricate detail. And just like the larger version, uses pneumatic force to move the arm. And here we go. There it goes. Now, what are the applications of this tiny structure? Surgery on the human body. Hopefully your innards don't look like this, but it is not the accuracy of human anatomy we are interested in, but this tiny octopus arm's ability to move around. Keyhole surgeries are a lot safer than open surgeries, performed by creating multiple small incisions instead of one large one. So tell me about the advantages of soft robotics in laparoscopic surgery. The idea is 
to be able to move dexter dexterously inside the human body, pass around the organs, so high dexterity for, for the surgeon, in a very flexible way, so to be also intrinsically safe. Right. But when the surgeon site, the surgical site, is reached, of course the surgeon has to be able to apply forces. Yes. And this can be enabled by activating the stiffening mechanism. In that case, the entire system um, undergoes to a sort of um, um, freezing. So the entire structure becomes harder okay. and the tip is able to um, produce higher forces. And that is the next phase of this project, to provide surgeons with not only a highly flexible camera, but with a range of flexible surgical instruments that will increase the surgeon's precision and range of motion and decrease both trauma to the body and time of recovery for the patient. So all hail the mighty octopus and the robotics revolution it is inspiring. And with an entire world of remarkable animals with exceptional abilities, there's no telling just where robotics will take its next inspiration and where that inspiration will take us. Everybody, animatronic. Thanks for doing that. Oh, this thank you. This is a real passion of yours, isn't it? It is, it is. I was not yet three when the first Star Wars came out, so I grew up with R2-D2 and C-3PO and Tweaky and all these amazing robots from science fiction. Robots are the one aspect of science fiction that are here and they're real. It certainly seems from your experiences in Pisa that the, the future, the real future, is very different from the future that we all imagined growing up. Yes, I, the, the future we envision mechanical people, you know, humanoid robots walking around just like we are, look like we do, uh, but I don't really think it's like that. I think it's similar actually to the Jetsons where there are going to be robot hands or appendages coming out of the walls. So what was the take home moment for you from your experience? Human intelligence is not necessarily the holy grail of robotics. Evolution has shown us that intelligence takes many forms and we don't possess every form of intelligence there is on this planet. So why not make use of every kind of intelligence when we're building artificial intelligence?